Join us for Conspiracy Crypto Pirates. Arr. Welcome to Conspiracy Crypto Pirates, episode six. How's it going? Not first, adding yourself. I didn't say first matey, and you started talking already. Oh, you said. Welcome, first matey. How's it going? <laughs> Not too bad in yourself. Did I just throw you off your groove? You did. I was wondering what I was welcome to. Your <laughs> wonderful... To my ship. You are always welcome on my ship. Unless I throw you overboard. Then why do you say so? <laughs> For all the people that understand. <laughs> I thought I was assumed. <laughs> so, what's new in the crypto space? Um, it's a lot of rumors, hearsay, and talk. It's and nonsense. Like. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we've had uh, Christmas, holidays are past nice. us now, and we should be going into the bull run, supposedly. The new year. Which is the bull run. Oh, okay. We all, 2024. It's the Chinese bull run, okay. <laughs> yeah, the year of the bull. Well, actually, I don't know what year it is. I have no Probably, clue either. It seems like it's the year of the tiger, but all of you Chinese um, watchers out there, please tell us what year it is down below. But, um... Yeah, you know what I found interesting with the um, BTC, Bitcoin? Okay. So it has, they've been trying to get the ETF, obviously, yes. going January, early January. We've been talking about it every week. January 10th, yeah. Yes. So what's interesting about it is um, they've been trying to get a Bitcoin ETF for the last 10 years. Wow. Yeah. That is crazy. Yeah, I didn't realize that it's been that long that it's actually been in the works, been trying to happen. Yeah. Uh, and I feel like that's kind of par for the course for a lot of crypto projects is they seem like to the general public that they're uh, a new a new thing, a new technology, new fangled yeah. thing. But if you go back in history, they've been around for honestly years and years. Like Bitcoin's been around for Oh my goodness, a long time. I mean, if they've been working on the ETF for 10 years, yeah. it's been forever. Dogecoin's been around for like 10 or 15 years as well. Um, and that's just a, a meme coin. That's yeah. nothing crazy. XRP, they've been working on that for about the same as well. Yeah, a long time. So it's not like, the, to the average consumer, for lack of a better word, it's been, yeah. it seems new to them, but it's been really honestly in the background being worked on for probably a decade, decade and a half, really. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of like the Forbes, um, like new millionaire list. Oh yeah. Or like it's overnight success list or whatever. Yeah. It's like they, they've been working on their success for um, right. 10, 20, 30 years. Like Colonel Sanders um, yeah. made it big with Kentucky Fried Chicken. Right. What, when he was in his 70s? Yeah. So, yep. I mean, that I, it tells you a lot. That yeah. You just need to keep on grinding at it. Oh, um, for sure. The smarter you are at it, the <laughs> more likelihood of success you might be. So you might want to educate yourself on what you're going into before you jump into it. But you can always over-educate yourself where you never do anything. That's that's very true. I mean, oftentimes, like to the general people, your neighbor thinks that all of a sudden, overnight success, you just, you know, we're successful. And then, because from the outside looking in, all they see is one thing and then all of a sudden success versus they don't know what you've been doing in your garage for the last 10 years, like yeah. you're saying. No, that's, yeah. yeah. Or you're doing it out in the open like Noah did. Yeah. <laughs> Building an arc for 120 years. <laughs> right. I always forget that it was that length of time. Yeah. You always, well, it's only like, what, six verses? <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, that's crazy. But, um, but I did kind of going off of Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Did you see that micro uh, strategy? Uh, purchased a new order of Bitcoin. No, is that the, the company with Michael so Sailor? Uh, Sailor. Sailor. Yeah. Michael yeah. Sailor. Yeah, he likes to sail. That's why I've invited <laughs> him on our ship. He hasn't uh, come aboard yet, right. but uh, those new f new fancy yachts <laughs> doesn't like our old crusty ships. <laughs> One day we will pirate him <laughs> and steal his booty. <laughs> I guess these days pirates are using inflatable rafts. Oh, really? Yeah. Is that a story that I should hear? I think they made a movie about it. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> it's just when you mess with the Navy SEAL snipers, it doesn't end well with you. Oh, okay. 
Well, we'll stay away from them. <laughs> we'll st <laughs> stick with treasure. <laughs> But they purchased uh, Michael Saylor and MicroStrategy. Yeah. They purchased an additional uh, 14,622 Bitcoin. 14,000. Wow. Like this week. Um, That's crazy. Yeah. Which it kind of, uh, to a lot of people, um, still shows that obviously they're very bullish on Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Which if you're buying 14,000, yeah. almost uh, 15,000. Do, do you want to explain? Mm-hmm what MicroStrategy is and who Michael Sellier is and why um, why he's buying Bitcoin. Yeah, uh, I know part of the story. I don't know if I know the full story. I don't know if you're educated on it at all. Just a little bit. Okay, you can fill in the gaps okay. that I miss, which will probably be many. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know Michael Saylor is, um, he's the CEO of... Um, MicroStrategy. MicroStrategy. Um, he is very bullish on Bitcoin. He has been for years and years and years um his company i believe is a software company mm -hmm. if i'm not mistaken i think so uh do you know what software that they make or create no i do not that i'm not 100 percent sure about or on but um a large part of um their company's holdings is in bitcoin and that's like it's publicly traded company so a lot of people that was kind of their way in a back door to kind of investing in um, Bitcoin. So like if you had a, uh, like a, um, uh, what do you call it? A retirement account. Mm -hmm. Obviously that's what the whole ETF thing is for. People are trying to be able to put their retirement accounts and everything into like uh, cryptos. cryptos or Bitcoin or whatever. Yeah. This was a company that was so heavily um, uh, invested into Bitcoin that when Bitcoin goes up, their stock shares go up too because mm -hmm. that's the vast majority of their company. So as an individual, you could invest in MicroStrategy and okay. it was almost like a backdoor into kind of investing in Bitcoin. Bitcoin yeah. So what, what I understood and kind of a little bit of the research I did on him is that he was going into... Um, he was looking at like the 10 year forecast of his company mm -hmm. and it kept on his business was going down and down and down. Mm -hmm. um, and so he's like, well, what do I do? Like I can like he was thinking about like different strategies to build his company up. Mm -hmm. And the best strategy that he found was Bitcoin. <laughs> Just investing in Bitcoin? Investing in Bitcoin because, I mean, his job is to look after the best interest mm -hmm. of his um, shareholders. Yeah. And so he was like, I can either risk it mm -hmm. or he believed so much in Bitcoin that it was very interesting. Like I was actually listening to him today and he was saying that um, people like have overestimated how much energy that Bitcoin will actually use when it's up and running at its full potential. Because at its full potential, you're utilizing everything. And so mm. you're a little more efficient with that. And then also he was saying that um, technology is going to get better and better and better. That sure. Just kind of like the Apple... Um, M1 M chips? M1 chips and M2 and M3, they're getting better and better where their like, battery life is like yeah. 20 hours or something right. like that, which is crazy. Right. Basically, it's going to take less uh, processing power to... Um, it's going to take less energy for the same processing right. power. Gotcha. And so it's kind of like that. And he was saying that it increases at about 40% okay. every single year. It okay. decreases. Oh, wow. And so that's an interesting take on it because as most people and me included, I've never really thought about uh, looking at the energy consumption side from that side of things just mm -hmm. on whether or not, because a lot of cryptocurrencies, they try to create the blockchain to be more efficient, mm -hmm. which is yeah. great. And, yeah. But I've never thought about it from the back side of making the computers more efficient or the computers will get more efficient to process the same. Thing. That's interesting. Yeah. And so he was saying that if we did that at the very beginning of, say, digital music. Okay. And we gave everyone a floppy disk and a tube computer and all yeah. that, that it would use up all the electricity that we had if we gave everyone that technology at that time, right okay. then and there. <laughs> or just, just imagine, like, say, 10 years or 
10 years ago. Yeah. You know how every single high school teenager or girl is taking a selfie? Yeah. <laughs> that would have 10 years ago bricked our whole uh, electric grid. Oh, interesting. And so if you look at with the technology moving on and yeah. forward, forward, the more we go on, the more efficient things get. Oh, interesting. And so we're able to do more. We're also producing more electricity. Correct. But we're also being more efficient with what we have as well. That's so cool. I've never thought about it in that regard, like backwards. Mm -hmm. Huh. And he was also saying that um, energy is kind of a key component to making it a scarce commodity. Oh. And so um, see. if you add if you have if you have to have energy to it, it's going to add an element of value to it. Right. Just like gold, for you to mine gold, you're going to have to it has a certain amount of energy. Right. That's why we don't mine a lot of gold. Mm -hmm. Because it would cost more to mine than it would be to sell. Right. It. So you'd be a net loss. Gotcha. So huh. there's an element of Bitcoin to that, to the scarcity of yeah. it. That's so funny. And then I was listening to sense. Mark Moss interviewing, what is it, Gary... Gensler? No, no. What? Gary Cardone. Okay. Uh, does um, ring a bell. Yeah, but he does a lot of stuff in, like, energy. He started at energy, and then he kind of really got into this whole crypto thing. Hmm. And he was talking about how energy and um, cryptos are kind of, especially Bitcoin, yeah. are closely related, like oil Interesting. and cryptos. He saw a huge similarity. Between oil and cryptos? Yeah. Still, or? Yeah, Weird, like when oil goes up, cryptos go up, or... Well, um, I guess it makes sense because oil is also attached to energy. Yes. And then Bitcoin is attached to energy in mm -hmm. a way. Oh. Where he was saying that, um, like, Europe is moving towards using nuclear power, mm -hmm. which for some odd reason is now the miracle drug for right. energy, which we'll find something wrong probably about... Two years into yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, they'll, <laughs> they'll decide have, that there's something Russia wrong. will probably pay for protesters to go and protest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. But, um, so you have that whole energy component yeah. to it. But he was saying that, so say, like, supposedly we, um, that pipeline running from Russia to Germany. Yeah. Um, was it? Nord Stream Nord, Nord 1 Stream. or 2 or yeah, something. something yeah. like that. The one that randomly blew yeah. up that supposedly we did, but supposedly we didn't. Right. Um, There's a conspiracy we should yeah. talk about. But he was saying that we started supplying them with the extra energy that they needed. Right. And they also were looking at other places for the energy Germany was. Okay. And the whole rest of Europe. Okay. And they had a mild winter that year, which right. was very fortunate yeah, for them. Yeah, for sure. And it looks like it's going to be a little more harsh for them, but who knows. Yeah. Um, no, that's kind of funny because that was a huge thing in the news, what, a year or whatever ago when it all happened. And, like, what you were talking about, how the energy shortages they would be receiving. And I feel like we've we've heard nothing about it. And... Obviously, I mean, the pipe didn't just suddenly get fixed and they're not getting oil. So that's kind of interesting to uh, see how that's uh, playing a role. Did they say, because you said that they were going to start uh, doing the nuclear thing again. Mm -hmm. Did they say how long that would take to get that up and running? Like, um, I'm sure that's a 10 to 20 year yeah. process. Because I knew they were shutting some old ones down like prior to this explosion yeah. i didn't know if they could like flip a switch turn those back on i from my understanding from what i heard it's not a flip of a switch you, yeah i mean you got to get all the components over there and they, right they retest kinda, it and yeah i don't yeah. know how long of a process it might be a year it might be two yeah. years it might be six months who knows right I'm curious if because um like that gary guy that you were talking about yeah, gary Cardone. gary v or gary, gary yeah gary v. Yeah, not Gary V. Uh, Grant, uh, Gary Cardone. Yeah. Well, he was saying how um, oil was attached to Bitcoin, or it seemed to be attached to mm -hmm. Bitcoin. 
Um, I wonder if like the nuclear power becomes a bigger and bigger thing, if that will Bitcoin and oil will like decouple as far as um, mm. like their trading. Yeah. So he he had an actually interesting take on mm -hmm. it. This is kind of where I was wanting to go is that he was saying that. So say down the road or even today. Everyone stops buying oil from Russia. Mm -hmm. Russia could just pump their own oil and then transfer that into pretty much mining Bitcoin mm. or mining different um, cryptos right. and be making money that way. Interesting. And so instead of, like, say it's cost a buck yeah. to get it out of the ground, and then he was saying, it, what, two or three more bucks Mm -hmm. to ship it there and then they have like a 50 cents profit or whatever you yeah, know, yeah whatever it is per gallon you know he was just using that example there's a transfer fee right that, um that you could take back yeah that you could take back and then instead of you paying for that transfer fee now you're mining bitcoin and now you're pretty much sending that energy into a um into a digital form yeah and shipping it off to somewhere else that's true which is that's, a very interesting that, thought yeah that especially is. for a country that um is might be in a situation somewhat of like russia right that might be able to use it right in that I, nature maybe that's why right people don't like bitcoin uh, maybe because they can't govern it but right. the thing is, a currency you can't really govern, and if you do govern a currency, then people are going to move away from it. Right, hundred percent, because then that deters people from wanting to use it because it's obviously it can be controlled. Yeah, that's interesting. Hence CBDCs. <laughs> <laughs> that that's fascinating. I wonder if like Russia, for instance, if they have the capacity to and where they would purchase like more um chips to mine bitcoin mm. because it takes a specific kind of chip um and a big powerful i think it's gpus to mine bitcoin Bitcoins, i think are gpus yeah. yeah and i was curious where they would get if i don't even know if they produce gpus in-house because i mean a lot of that is like taiwan and everything yeah. that's also a huge another thing did we talk about that last time uh with how go ahead no go ahead no so we didn't talk about not, it. not we've talked about taiwan a little bit but not too much okay so pretty much there's uh war going on mm -hmm. on pretty much computer chips yeah <coughs> and i mean energy and different different right um little economic wars everywhere right now but computer chips especially like you have china you have japan you have taiwan you have the united states and you have a couple other countries mm -hmm. but those are i think the main countries right there yeah that are really going into everything mm, right into the chips China right now is producing or is wanting to produce like 80% of the world's chips. Mm -hmm. But that is like from the 80s below, like old chips. Okay, they want to or that's what they are producing? I think what they're trying to okay. uh, aspire to. Okay. And so pretty much they're just taking all the lower class chips. Right that you might use in your little remote control right. car or something of that right. nature. TV remotes and, yeah. and little things like that. Okay. Yes, exactly. Or your like tire pressure on your car. Yeah. Or just sure. small little things that, I mean, tire pressure on your car is probably going to cost you 500 bucks to fix. <laughs> right. Probably cost them 30 cents. Probably to create piece. it. Yeah. Yeah. And then charge you 200. But. <laughs> I sense a little uh, frustration <laughs> that you've had this problem before. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. But we won't go down into that. <laughs> but, okay. So, China is making a lot of those. And so, mm -hmm. that leaves... Um, America, Taiwan, and Japan kind of ma making the rest, and those are allies right now. Right. And so all pretty much China's the only, pretty much they're kind of allies, kind of not. They're being aggressive, especially after the whole COVID thing with the moves that they made and right. 
kind of their bullying tactics, like, hey, we have the chips, and they're like, okay. And so everyone's kind of positioning themselves to be independent of China on key components. Right. Um, like, I mean, like your medicine and stuff like that. I know right. we've been trying to move back. I know China for the last, what, 20 years has been slowly trying to acquire that market. Mm. And so I think people are like waking up saying, hey, China is more of a bully than anything else, so we want to step back from right. depending on them. Like, right. yeah, we're going to use them still. Right. But depending on them on key components. Well, yeah, and I mean, I think the uh, Roni Rona showed mm -hmm. how much we were depending on them. Like, think of, like, uh, the car lots for yeah. GM, how they, were, they couldn't yeah. sell you a car because all those stupid little chips, mm -hmm. the dumb ones, they still needed from China, but they couldn't get those chips over. So that makes sense. Yeah. An eye opener, like, oh, wow, this is going to cause a huge bottleneck, because it did. Yeah. And if we, if there was ever a bigger issue than that, then there would be a huge, huge problem. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Um, what I was looking at, it kind of ties in back to uh, Bitcoin and um, everything. Okay. Is so... Oftentimes we think of like 2023 as a year, like it wasn't a bull run in our minds, right? Yeah. But when you look at it, um, Bitcoin actually went up. Oh, the last three to four months, yeah. Yeah, So, but just taking year to year. Mm -hmm. Bitcoin went up 160%. And that's pretty bull run. I mean, from the bottom? Uh, just this year. Yeah, or are you talking about like... This time last year, um, I think it was from the start of twenty twenty three. Okay, till till now. Yeah, till wow. now. But what I thought was fascinating, and that kind of went along with our conversation with uh, mining, is mining companies that are like on the S and P five hundred, they went up like eight hundred percent, or some eight hundred, some six hundred percent, which yeah. is kind of funny because, you know, Bitcoin itself went up one hundred and sixty percent. A mining rig company went up 800%, which is probably in preparation for the bull run and everything. Right. But it's just kind of funny where, like, okay, uh, where you want to put your money, you're like, oh, Bitcoin. But it's like you would be m way more money ahead if you would have dropped into that mining company. Um, and they probably, the mining companies, the probably reason why you had that 800% uh, jump mm -hmm. was they probably had a bigger hit when uh during the uh the cult, the bear market okay being a company um uh not being oh yeah producing they probably dropped a lot harder mm -hmm. and faster well, than they might have been losing money at that point they might have been yeah and then obviously <laughs> people are preparing for the bull market and everything mm -hmm. which is why it went up to 800 percent or whatever yeah but the small little tangent that i thought was kind of interesting um on yeah. that point. I know a lot of people are interested in, instead of buying gold or buying the asset mm -hmm. or the tangible thing like Bitcoin or gold or silver or something of that nature, they like buying the mines. Oh, and interesting. So, like, if gold goes up, say you have, like, 10 tons of gold in the ground, mm -hmm. but it's going to cost you, like, $5,000 um per ounce to get it out and it's worth three thousand mm -hmm. once gold hits six thousand now you have ten right. tons of a thousand dollars profit mm. per ounce in the ground interesting so i wonder how so i'm not knowledgeable in gold mining at all but like i'm curious how they evaluate that like we got ten 10,000 10, ounces or whatever of gold, and then how quickly they can um, uh, take it out. Like, say it hits where you're going to be a $1,000 profit now, how quickly can you get that 10,000 out at mm. profit level? Because say it, it drops, like in two years, say it drops back down below yeah, the profitable range. Yeah, I'm sure you range. have, like, lead time for even your equipment. Yeah. yeah. Like, your, I mean... Those are specialty equipment. You're probably sure. buying them like two, three years in advance. Yeah. If you really think about it. Yeah. Like I know um, 
piece of equipment during the 2008 crash just kind of tanked. And then close to 2011, I mean, they stopped making them. Yeah. And you're still building roads and still doing heavy equipment stuff. And so right. all the companies that um, were out swimming in the bay and the water went out and you found out who was swimming naked. Yeah. You, those all people had to sell the equipment and they sold it for their cheap. Right. And then, so no one was buying new. And then three or four years down the road, everyone's like, we need new now. Right. And then the used market goes skyrocketing. Huh. And so it's kind of that if you have a, ba inf if you have a fluctuation of that nature, it will yeah. catch up eventually to it. Interesting. That is interesting. Huh. Like right now, the housing market, we're having, why the housing market, from my understanding, why part of the reason why it hasn't crashed mm -hmm. is that during 2008, we pretty much overbuilt. Okay. And then we didn't build for the next 10 years. Mm. And now we just started building again. Mm -hmm. And we're still millions of homes behind. Right. And so everyone's still looking at getting into a home. Even when interest rates are high mm -hmm. and everything. And then if I remember right, if, I think it was like 90, 91, in 92, uh -huh. some around in that era, there was more babies made mm -hmm. than in the um, baby boom era. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Like, and all per the, year. Well, 91, 90, and all those people are probably at house buying age. Yeah, at, at the house point. buying age. So that's an odd, random thing oh. that plays into a factor that you had three years oh. that was the baby making years, I guess. Interesting. Huh. There was no wars then. <laughs> <laughs> Not like a Gulf Stream or anything? Yeah. Well, there I was... don't know. <laughs> Small ones. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's fascinating. Huh. Um, I forget. There was something on that I was going to say, but I don't remember. But it, when we were talking about catching people with their pants underwater and mm -hmm. <laughs> in the bay, I was thinking of um, uh, who, uh, the g people that escaped from Alcatraz, the th okay. three guys. Uh, three guys? Well, there was a re yeah, there's three guys that escaped like together. Okay. And Alcatraz. Oh, Alcatraz. I was thinking Auschwitz for some odd reason. No. My bad. I just visited there, so oh. <laughs> maybe that's why. <laughs> How was that? Um, solemn. Okay. That makes, it's that's very a good interesting word. to kind of see the history and kind of pretty much the complacency of people mm -hmm. and kind of that that battle mm -hmm. was lost five years, ten years beforehand wow. is how I kind of see it. Okay. So pretty much if you're not going to speak up for the truth yeah, um, when it's inconvenient, then you definitely won't speak up for truth when they're pointing a gun to your head or you yeah. won't fight back. 100%. And so, like, I think it's more important to fight back when you can verbally mm -hmm. and do the fight with the power of ideas mm -hmm. instead of the power of weapons. For sure. And so I think they, they just kind of went along. To get along. To get along. Yep. It's kind of like that saying that... Um, the Nazis came for the Jews, mm -hmm. and I said nothing. Mm -hmm. The Nazis came for the gypsies, and I said nothing. Mm -hmm. The Nazis came for another group, and I said nothing. Then yeah. the Nazis came for me, and there was no one left to say anything. Right. So if, yep. like, it's a s small demographic of people yep. that they want to sectionalize mm -hmm. off, and then sectionalized off another one, and they keep on doing it and right. keep on doing it. And it has happened throughout history over and over again. Yep. History is just repeating itself over and over, it seems like. Yeah. That's crazy. But, um, but hey, back. you guys have the opportunity to stand up and speak um, for truth and freedom. And so when you get the opportunity, do so. Don't do it in a way of fighting or argumentative. Um, it's more of a debate. Having a conversation with your local people is really what it's all about. And even if you're wrong, 
opening up the conversation and having the dialogue, um, iron sharpens iron. So you might have a dumb idea. They might have a good idea. They might have a dumb idea and you might have a good idea. Yep. And so if we don't speak, speak it, then we'll never know. And we will have these fallacies in our head that never get corrected. For sure. Absolutely. Well said. Well said, first matey. <laughs> uh, but going back to uh, Alcatraz. Yes. So uh, the, the guy that, or, there's three guys that escape Alcatraz, right? Mm -hmm. And then it's been long by like the, the FBI. They always have thought basically that they probably drowned in the bay or like froze to death tr trying to swim to shore. Right, hypothermia. Hypothermia, yes. And um, supposedly uh, one of the family members of one of the, the people escaped like years later got a, a letter from him supposedly but they never knew if it was true if it was a hoaxer or whatever right. because like he told the story to an inmate and then the inmate got out and then sent a letter or whatever yeah, yeah. or it, at that time i mean their last name was public knowledge so mm -hmm. i mean it could be any hoaxer on the street that right. wrote a letter um like he basically said he uh uh, escaped to it was South America somewhere oh, wow. and uh, basically was like living out the remainder of his years and he sent a picture of himself supposedly and oh wow so then it wasn't until like a few years ago that they they took it to the FBI and showed <laughs> well at this time the guy's probably long gone right and uh, they took uh, the FBI did like handwriting analysis on the letter Okay. And it matched up like 90-something percent. Wow. Um, they did like facial recognition on the picture that he sent. Right. And then don't, they, don't the FBI have like an aging? Yes. And they ran it through like the aging thing to try to like make it. And that matched up like 90-something percent. Wow. And then on this documentary I watched, they uh, then traveled to where he said he uh, like landed in, mm -hmm. in South America and uh, it was like a small little town, and um, they showed him the picture that it was like oh, the aged picture yeah. or whatever. And they're like, oh, yeah, that looks like the guy, blah, 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 we met. It was just him. It was just him. Uh, he used to live like it was like kind of a mountain um, <laughs> town. Yeah. He used to live like at the top of the mountain in this area. And the, like they had a guy that like took him up to where he used to live. Mm -hmm. And, like, up there, there was, like, some artifacts from, like, Alcatraz. Oh, my goodness. That was there. So it's almost, like, 99% conclusive that at least one of them actually got away. <laughs> they actually survived? <laughs> yeah, and survived. Man, that, that would have been an interesting interview to have. Yeah, that would be fun. Fun to yeah. talk to. But, it, yeah, the documentary is very interesting to watch, for yeah. sure. Um, if you do not want to be plundered, like and subscribe. But yeah, any conspiracies for me? Okay, I'm sure there is. <laughs> um, oh, going back to MicroStrategy, um, I opened up their website, and it sounds <coughs> like they're really trying to get into AI right now. AI, um, they're okay. um, a business, like software for businesses. Okay is kind of what they do and they have um they're trying to get into the ai it Game. looks like along with every other company for businesses yeah which i mean if you're a business you kind of have to go that way yeah especially if you're a technology business right like i mean if you're cleaning toilets <laughs> then maybe ai is not going to really help you out right now maybe the robots yeah not the <laughs> so, AI. yeah no that's interesting because I think in the tech industry, I think the whole AI thing is kind of the next revolution, and you're going to see a lot of companies uh, grow and f crumble within this industry. I mean, that's why I think you see, obviously, like Microsoft, who's been a, um, a yeah. huge technology company for the last 40 years or whatever, why they're heavily, heavily into AI trying to continue their trend. Google obviously wants to continue their dynasty. Um, <laughs> what tech company doesn't want it? Well, for sure, for sure. Um, but it's just kind of funny. I think if you, if you, for the lack of a better analogy that we use in crypto, 
you know, follow the whales. Mm -hmm. That's what the whales are doing. So that makes sense. But I'm curious what MicroStrategy is like specifically what they're doing in AI. And I kind of want to learn more about like what what their old tech, like what was MicroStrategy? Like what software did they sell? I think it was more business. Um, I don't know the exact stuff. Yeah, but B2B. But, uh. Yeah, business infrastructure. Right. So probably barring stuff that nobody really wants to probably. Into. Um, that's interesting. I had a, a, another conspiracy on the B Bermuda Triangle. Bermuda Triangle. Okay. Do you know much about the B Bermuda Triangle? I just know everything gets lost there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the Bermuda Triangle. Do you know where it's at? Somewhere Bermuda? in the Carib Caribbean. <laughs> yeah. Islands. It's like there's a triangle from like like Florida to the Caribbean islands to um, where it's kind of like where South America kind of okay. comes in there. Um, <clears throat> but obviously there's been like tons and tons and tons of shipwrecks in that triangle, tons and mm -hmm. tons of aircraft that have crashed or gone missing in that uh, triangle area. Um, and uh, there's so many different stories around uh, the Bermuda Triangle and mysteries. Okay. One of the one of the theories, what I thought was really interesting, was they think that it could be potentially um, where Atlantis was, huh? In that area, and what's causing the disturbance? Because the, a lot of the aircraft, when they fly over that area, they're um, uh, almost the thermometers. They're Points of direction. Um, compass? Compass, thank you. Wow, I'm so, <laughs> their compass. The thermometer. <laughs> no, I don't know why. Their thermometer that points in the direction. <laughs> now, their compass um, it goes crazy in the Bermuda Triangle. Like, it loses the magneticity. Maybe that's why the new North Pole's going to pop up. Yeah, right, in Bermuda. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but, so anyway... So what's contributing to um, that in this specific claim with Atlantis is supposedly um, divers have d dove down in that area and have found like a giant crystal um, a pyramid down there. Crystal pyramid. Yeah. And um, s this is the part where it gets a little bit sketchy is supposedly... Every time that they've brought equipment down to take pictures of it and everything, they either lose it or goes haywire or crazy. Which I mean, if if for the sake of the argument, the, yeah. yeah, if there um, if there's something electrical happening over there where the um, where the so, thermometer said it again, where the compasses um, are going haywire, mm -hmm. then you bring it down a digital camera, it might go haywire as well. Yeah. So there's that sake of the argument. Okay, so let's just run with this. Okay. We're going with this whole... Like, Atlantis theory. Atlantis, um, electricity, pretty much, it's probably that crystal um, pyramid. pyramid is probably creating some sort of electricity. Mm -hmm. And supposedly the pyramids used to create electricity. Mm -hmm. Or harness it somehow, yeah. Yeah, but what I'm curious is now going to a conspiracy to making up a conspiracy. Okay, I like this. all the um, pyramids in Egypt, mm -hmm. were they crystal as well? Ooh, and the then capstones? when the energy ran out, they used up all the energy from the crystal and they became the stones that they are today. Hmm. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just thinking because the capstone on top mm -hmm. is gone. On the the Great Pyramid, there is no okay uh, the capstone being the the very tippy one. Yeah, supposedly I think I don't know how they know it or they think that it, I think it was like gold or overlaid in gold the okay. capstone, but maybe it was crystal. Maybe it was crystal underneath. Maybe yeah. Or maybe they just found the peak of it. Mm hmm. Maybe that's the they keep on transferring it from one to the next. Maybe, I don't know. I I mean, realistically, probably why the the capstone on the pyramid, if it was gold, and mm -hmm. I mean, some looters gonna I mean, come by and grab that. We love putting gold on almost everything. It's also a high conductor of electricity. Yeah, 
And so, like, you look out throughout history, mm -hmm. all the tops, roofs, domes, we just plaster in gold. Yeah. And then we say that there used to not be any electricity. Right. Right. Or was it just a conductor for lightning? But that's an expensive one. Yeah. And I feel like, I mean, lightning is so sporadic. Like, it's not like, oh, we're getting a lightning storm every day this mm -hmm. week. It's like, yeah, you have seasons for it. Um, which comes to the, another conspiracy is back, you know, all the countries. Well, you were just in Europe. A mm -hmm. lot of the old, old buildings have a lot of steeples yeah. and um, pokey tops. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so a theory with that is that they were actually harnessing electricity okay. through those steeples because a lot of steeples have like crosses mm. or wires and or wires yeah crosses and, and yeah, so forth copper on. yep roofs gold roofs and they think that the tops of the those steeples uh, underneath the the crosses or whatever was like a container with um uh almost said magnesium um Oh, it's like a fluid metal. Um, the stuff that you put in light bulbs? Mercury? Mercury, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Um, it was... The Obama light bulbs? <laughs> <laughs> you had to get a hazmat team <laughs> to vacuum up if you broke a light bulb. Really? He was, he was wanting to push go down that way because that's really when we went from... Um, the old-fashioned Edison type of light bulb yeah, to, to LED. the LEDs, uh, and mercury was the kind of the talk in the middle. Interesting, but there's um, back to the conspiracy. Sorry, with the little pokey steeples. Yeah, um, that the inside they had little like can uh, canisters with mercury in it, and they've done like experiments with like similar models, okay. and that mercury spins with that like harnessing okay. some kind of energy from the sky. That is crazy. And it spins it, therefore then creating a generator that generates electricity. Yeah. And it's, there's, uh, now I think next week, because I was going to look into that this week more mm -hmm. in detail, and I totally well, forgot. I can give you some more stuff to look into if you want to. Yeah. That. Do you know more about it? Um. So I actually have had conversations with co-workers. Yeah. This type of stuff, and so I haven't done any research on it. It's just more kind of hearsay. Hearsay. Them. But what they were saying is that, um, like, they found clay pots, mm -hmm. pottery, mm -hmm. um, with copper in them. Okay. In the pyramids. Oh. And I supposedly, think... if you add orange juice to it, okay, with the copper, it acts like a battery. Ah. And interesting. then. Going back over to Europe, yeah, I was in Dresden, and in the castle in Dresden, they mm -hmm. had a museum kind of devoted to technology and kind of like all the different technology gadgets, like they had oh, like serving like equipment, place. like watches and clocks. Like yeah. that was a huge, like telling time precisely was a yeah. huge thing. And because like when you're traveling around the world, mm -hmm. you look at the time, you look up at the stars and like they had the maps, like they had globes mm -hmm. of the earth and they would like using surveying equipment way back then. Like people were living in castles and you having people going out there with survey equipment, which just kind of blew my mind. Yeah. Like hitting islands and then they also <laughs> looking at the stars and they had like globes of the stars. Globes of the stars? Yeah. Like, so. Okay. Like, if you look straight up and you look, like, at the globe there, you can say, hey, I'm here. Uh, and then you can probably determine where like you're Triangulate? Are. Yeah, something of that nature. I don't know how they used them. Yeah. But they had, like, globes of, like, all the different star... Fascinating. Um, um, star maps and stuff like that? Yeah. That is so cool. And put it into a globe format that they can spin and rotate. That's crazy. Crazy. That would be a fun museum to see, actually. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, and going to... Oh, like, sorry. Yeah. Going back to that. <laughs> 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 going back to that. Um, that's kind of, like, explained. But one of the things that they had mm -hmm. was, um, like, a little thing that you cranked. Okay. That produced electricity. 
Okay. And then they actually had little batteries. And what year store. would this have been? I think the 1800s. Maybe oh, wow. 1700s. That's... But <clears throat> I'd have to look back at my photos on that. Interesting. But that, yeah, that was very interesting on that. And then, like, looking back, I'm like, what did the... What the like, okay, so you figure out you have electricity. You figure out how to store it. Mm -hmm. What is the only, th like, the only thing I could think of that yeah. they would actually legitimately use it for yeah. is torture. Like, what else are you going to use? Like, no. <laughs> yeah. You know? Starting fires. I don't know, but what else would you use the electricity back then for? Yeah, if they didn't have radios and TVs yeah. and... Because Edison created the light bulb. Maybe they created, well... Going back to um, Egypt, where yeah. you said they had those clay things, yeah, there are um, I was gonna say cave drawings, hier hieroglyphs mm -hmm. that uh, depict like people in a cave, like digging in a cave. But then right next to them, they have this weird-looking object that looks like this over, like elongated, like light bulb hmm. connected to something. And I mean, you look at it, it looks like this big light bulb. And the picture is in a cave. Interesting. So it's like uh, they might have powered that with those clay jars or whatever. Um, so <laughs> Got like the orange juice. <laughs> yeah, right. Where orange, where uh, orange is uh, heavily grown. And <laughs> I have no clue. I mean, it's probably yeah. mild over there. Yeah. So or probably. Well, and they say, I mean, however many thousands of years ago that um, that area would have been like lush. Mm -hmm. area so yeah. but um but yeah i mean if they had light bulbs then what else did they have that we kind of forgot about or didn't know they had or yeah it, well i'm just thinking of today's technology mm -hmm. like say a thousand years from now someone comes up and picks up a hard drive mm -hmm. or even a phone and yeah. they take a look at it and they're like that's interesting. Yeah. And I mean, it's probably rusted and everything <coughs> pretty much eroded away. Yeah. So you probably just have little components and then it's flown off into the dust. Yeah. So you might have like the little glass lenses yeah. of the camera and the screen. And you're just like, and wonder what this was. Yeah. And write it off. Oh, it was jewelry or something. <laughs> like, like, honestly, I mean. That's interesting. I never thought of that. Yeah. Sapphire crystals was an elegant piece of jewelry back. And that's what their camera lenses are made out of sapphire. <laughs> um, that's that's interesting because oh, man, there's so many stories that it brings up into my mind. There's uh, like a time traveler story mm -hmm. or guy that I, there's so much more to the the whole story, but he okay. supposedly invented a time machine, and he lived the tale to talk about it here and there but every time he got in the uh the time machine or whatever and he went back in time he would shift in time but because the earth is rotating at 17,000 miles per hour whatever, whatever it, is, it is yeah his geographic location would change as well Hmm. So, um, so he goes back in time, the earth spinning at so fast. So, like, if he's in his office and he's in his time machine, right, he would end up way far away. And um, just by going back a couple seconds. <laughs> yeah. And long story short, there was this guy who, so the way he described his time machine, he would go into this, like, almost sounded like a corrugated piping. Like, he'd have. His machine hooked up to this corrugated piping, like big enough, kind of like a barrel, but a little okay. bit bigger. And to like, that was like the wormhole to pass through. Huh. Anyway, so he'd go into that and then that would shoot him to whatever. And this, in the 70s, there was a guy, you know, 20 miles from where this guy lived um, and made the time machine. There was this random guy found in a barrel, they called it a barrel, in a lake, like at the bottom of the lake, drowned. And they pulled him up, and this was like, again, 70s, and he had on him, it, it looked like a smartphone, but they didn't know what it was in the 70s. Huh. And um, 
So they just kind of wrote it off. Oh, they had some weird thing. And <laughs> so then you're like, huh. <laughs> like, did that guy actually time travel and then, like, end up in the bottom of a lake? Right. And then uh, I think the... Or did the real time traveler just grab a cell phone, put it in his hand, shove him in the tube, and put him on the bottom of the lake? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> but it's just, like, so... There's so many, like, mysteries. And this specific story, there's several elements to it that are like realistic like do they actually have a picture like a photograph photograph of i was listening to it so i didn't see it i don't okay. know if they had a picture or not um i'll do more research on that yeah. for sure and see if i can find it but that one was Maybe really you can good slap the photo if you find it yeah yeah definitely but yeah so atlantis <laughs> atlantis but is it atlantis in africa there, or is that a different? No, you're right. Well, they they don't know where Atlantis is per se. Mm -hmm. Like different groups of people think, oh no, it's here. No, it's here. Um, the thing in Africa that you're talking about is like the Eye of Africa or something. Yeah, where it has that, a bunch of different circles and yeah. kind of like whoever Optimus or whatever that used yes. to live there, like describe these different structures. Yeah. Optimus. I don't Plato's, know. Plato's. Plato, sure. We'll go I with think that. Plato wrote about it. Yeah. <laughs> Optimus Prime. <laughs> <laughs> but because there's that that place that you're talking about, there's the um, Bermuda Triangle, and then there's another one somewhere in a different location that uh, they're actually, these people anyways that think it's there, okay. are pretty certain it's in their location. Um I'm trying to remember. It was fairly convincing evidence. Um, I mean, everybody has fairly yeah. convincing evidence well, when you don't have evidence. <laughs> in the in the Bermuda Triangle mm -hmm. area, there's this um, thing. It's called the Bemini Road, and it's. Can you travel on it, or is it underneath? The it's ocean? underneath the water by several meters, and it's um, it's an ancient road. Like, they, hmm. you can look at it perfectly square, like cobblestone street type thing. Oh, really? Just heading off. That's partially why they think, well, this must be Atlantis, because it, it was some civilization it's at some probably time. Probably poorly designed. It didn't shed the water too well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they forgot to put drainage pipes in. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's exactly what happened to Atlantis. So civilized, uh, crystal technology. <laughs> that is, that's funny. <laughs> oh man! Sorry if I ruined your story. No, it's it's all good. Uh, but um, there's a few other myths in that area. But that's that was the most interesting, kind of craziest out outlandish one. Although, like the Bimini Road thing is real. So yeah. there was something out there, whether it was Atlantis or some other lost civilization. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I was listening to another podcast and they were talking about Atlantis just in general and how um, it's so looked down upon, like archaeologists that believe or talk about Atlantis, they're like looked down upon by the other archaeologists. Mm. And they're like, why? Like we have some evidence that this, you know, Plato talked about right. it or whatever, and it's just an ancient civilization. Like, wasn't like, why is that such a bad belief or bad thing to look for? Yeah. Probably because it's expensive and they haven't found anything. Maybe, but I mean, isn't that kind of like what archaeology is about is a finding old relics and old cities and civilization? Yeah, but a lot of it, like, I mean, unless you're going down, like, a meter or two. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, if you're having to dig 100 feet, like, you can't dig 100 feet all over the entire world yeah. to go try and find something that you, like, really have no clue where it's at. Right, which another thing of why I think when they say, like, oh, this civilization could have never had this kind of technology because we looked you know um in their 
in their houses and the only tools that we could find were like ham hammers and chisels and screwdrivers or whatever. Mm. Well, I mean, you can find that in my garage. Yeah, you go to my house, I have a TV on the wall. But you know what's in my garage? Hammers and chisels and screwdrivers. I have nothing in there that can make a TV. The, the plant that made the TV is on the other side of the world in a giant facility. So like when you think about it, like archeology, span they could dig up my house, be like, there's no way he could have the technology for a TV. It's just they haven't dug 30 feet down yeah. but on I mean, the other side of the world. If you really think about it, like the hammer and chisel, mm -hmm. you go look at your house, they didn't use that technology of a yeah. hammer and chisel. I mean, a hammer, probably more a nail gun to speed things up. Right. But a lot of the technology, the fineness of the boards and all that. Yeah. It's not like you went there and got cut down a tree and like yeah. chiseled <laughs> yeah, you each did. individual board to be that precise. Yeah. They're like, know? how could he have had these two by fours? They're yeah. perfect. <laughs> when it was milled, right. you know, 500 miles away. You see screws or nails yeah. at such a... Precise spot, right? <coughs> yeah, no, that's why I think, like, with archaeology, there are only a Bronze Age technology back. Yeah, then. I mean, yeah, my house, I am in the right. Stone Age <laughs> with technology, <laughs> right? But I mean, if you go into that whole thought process, and mm -hmm. then you throw in, say, a hundred years, say we have an EMP, mm -hmm. everything's destroyed. You electrical yeah. devices are no longer a thing. Yep. And then say a hundred years, someone looks at this phone and yeah. uses it as a weapon to throw at somebody because yep. it's a nice heavy object or you know. Yeah. I mean EMP goes off, wipes out everything. And mm -hmm. then what if those like how many couple hundred, couple thousand people that actually know how to make a a chip? Mm hmm Like if say they died somehow. Yeah. Well, we'd be back in the Stone Age. Like I couldn't, I can't help you with making a computer, and ninety nine point nine percent of everybody else can't help you with making a computer. Um, so yeah, I mean, it feels like you could very easily. Actually, that kind of goes into one of the. Um, it's not really. Well, it might be a conspiracy theory, mm -hmm. but I was doing a little bit of research. Yeah. Um, on. Oh. Come closer. Come closer. Conspiracy Crypto Pirates is a new show. And we need you to like and subscribe. Please do so. Oh, and don't forget to comment. Yeah, do that. <laughs> okay. This Czech Republic um, company that um, was like the guy that founded this company or was one of the high ups in the company was the former chief of military intelligence the chief of military intelligence services of the Czech Republic. Okay. And the company is Obidum. Okay. Um, and the funny thing about them is that, um, well, the name originated from the Iron Age, from pretty much meaning a large fort or settlement or town. Okay. And it kind of came from the Celtic um, culture, but okay. it's what it's named after. But in the Czech Republic, I'm like, that's the way in England. Like, why would you name something like, didn't really seem culturally appropriate. Yeah. Ask me. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I know how proper you are. Do you drink but, with your pinky up as well? <laughs> <laughs> but um, Obidum, they create underground apocalypse bunkers. Okay. And so, and like they start at $40 million. Like they're showing like a mansion up on the top. Yeah. And then you know how like all the um, modern day castles from like the 18th and 17th century, they all are beautiful, have glass windows and all that. Okay. It was like a nice, like, a huge castle type thing, but there's really no fortress to it. Okay. And people call them castle over there, and I'm like, that's not really a castle. Yeah. Like, I need to be able to have, like, like scale the walls. Yeah, and yeah, have, yeah. Like, A the, moat around it right. and drawbridge. Yeah, but I guess they went away from the castle, from living in the fortress to having a fortress, 
and then living in a huge mansion, I guess. Okay. But it, it was kind of interesting because you know those, and then on the back yard or something like that, they have this nice little flat garden thing. That yeah, they yeah, have yeah. all these, like, like bush mazes or, yeah. you know, yeah. those random things. Yes. Well, they pretty much showed that, and then underneath that flat garden area yeah. is this $40 million bunker that has everything from um, blast protection, gas tightness, air filtration, energy and backups, emergency exits. Wow. And decontamination rooms. Wow. And, and this is a company that's around now? Yeah, and they okay. pretty much make these bunkers for the multi-million and billionaires, wow. you know. Probably all the um, WEF people. Yeah, probably. <laughs> well, I heard Zuckerberg um, is building another um, house or whatever on Hawaii that has... I wonder where you get the property. <laughs> yeah. He's building another place, but it's a um, bunker-style house. Hmm. Or to be very um, safe or whatever. And then okay. I'm like, hmm, what does he know? <laughs> right. Uh, but yeah, it's 240, 250 million dollar bunker thing that he's building. Fortress house. But your bunker thing that's forty million dollars. Yeah. That's the starting price. Of that's the a starting price. I, I mean, they showed like they had a grassy section. Yeah. And it comes up out of the ground and you drive your vehicle down underneath into like the garage section. So have they sold any? I have no <laughs> clue. I'm like, assuming if you have the general of the military intelligence services coming onto that, that you probably have sold some and it's probably yeah. to the millions and billionaires and they also billions. probably to government entities for like Congress or That's probably. people like that as well. And yeah. they're like, hey, why don't we make this right. available to the, right. the individual person as well so yeah. they have two locations. Well, right, because you got to One underneath think. their work and one underneath yeah. their house. <laughs> Naturally, with a tunnel that goes in between. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, you got to also think that there's got to be, uh, like, you always think of, like, Lockheed Martin and mm -hmm. uh, all that for, like, military industrial complex type things. But, I mean, there's got to be also the, besides an aerospace company, there's got to be companies for building bunkers and, and everything like that. Yeah. that That's cool. The... Military industrial complex diggers. <laughs> yeah. You know, what's interesting is that kind of around, I think, when this company started, is that the Czech Republic held a, like a conference or something like that mm -hmm. for the Center of Excellence for Chemical, Biological, um, <coughs> Radiological, <coughs> and Nuclear Defense, helping NATO's military commanders and civilians so, I mean, it's probably a nice way of paying off a, mm -hmm. a general for helping do this or that. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> that is fascinating. But um, uh, in regards to the season okay. of um, Christmas and everything, okay. kind of going back to Christmas. All right. And Home Alone. There's conspiracies around Home Alone. No, okay. I have not heard any about Home Alone. More about, like, the story plot and, like, you know, things like, for instance, how come um, Kevin is always, he's home alone and he never calls the cops and everything like that? Well, there's a conspiracy that, and they live in that giant, beautiful house, right? Mm -hmm. So the thought is... Um, and taking the whole family on a yes. trip across seas. Yes. So the conspiracy is um, Mr. McAllister okay. was part of the mob. Oh, that makes yes. sense. So therefore, that's where he had all the money to be able to afford taking a whole family to Europe on vacation, yeah. as well as um, instilling upon his son the theory of like not contacting the, the police. Uh, in, uh, but why did they call the police? In the movie, when they got over there. But who called the police? The mom. 
I don't think the mom ever called the police. The whole family was. I just watched it. Oh, really? Like two days ago. Yeah. The mom? Oh, the, mo the like, mom called the police to go check on him, I guess. Yeah. Stop thinking the about it. The police guy knocked on yeah. the door. But go on with your time. theory that I busted. Right. So maybe they were okay with the police in that instance, but they instilled the fear of the police in Kevin. As Why do they have fear of the furnace? Well, I mean, probably because Uncle Benny got thrown in there because he just uh, he, he did something <laughs> to the, the family. <laughs> yeah. Um, so then there's that theory. Then there's another theory where um, who's the old guy uh, that shovels the snow? Uh, yeah. Uh, the neighbor. Yeah. The one that he became friends with at the very at end. the end. That he might be Kevin, time traveler. Huh. Because that guy, he had problems with his family, and he seemed to like make amends, kind of like Kevin had a lot of problems with his family. And then that guy seemed to pop up in the most perfect opportune times mm -hmm. and to not be seen by... Yeah, because didn't he save the day at the very mm -hmm. end? Like, yeah. how do you know how, what doors to come in to not be heard and mm. how to save the day? So there's that one. Okay. Another conspiracy is the big jolly guy um, that played the saxophone, part of the polka band. Oh, yeah. <laughs> polka, polka, polka. <laughs> <laughs> he was uh, the devil. Beca Interesting. Because um, there's a scene in the movie Who where... gets into a moving van in the back with a bunch of people... Yes. Band instruments people well, and not expect anything to go wrong. Right. And right before that, the mom said that she would do anything to get back to her son, even selling her soul to the devil. And as soon as he, she said that, he popped in and he's like, oh, I can help you, blah, blah, blah. Then, and what happens oftentimes when people sell their souls to the devil? The devil doesn't really give, give them anything in return, mm. because in the movie, when she gets there, the whole family arrives seconds later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, that was kind of funny, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so there you have it. Home Alone blown for you. <laughs> yeah. You can never watch it again. It's not as wholesome as you think, no. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't consider that movie wholesome. <laughs> Tell, get on your knees and tell me hello. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas, you <laughs> filthy animal. Probably get copyrighted by saying that. <laughs> but, Put yeah. that on a t-shirt. <laughs> Put that on a pirate hat. There you go. Arr. That's That's all the conspiracies I had today. Oh, um, cool. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Please like, comment, subscribe down below. Tell us what you think. Tell us what we should do. Tell us what we should talk about. Is there any conspiracy theories that you know that we should be talking about? That is an interesting question. Yeah, I'd love to get more entries. Yeah, that, that's actually a very good question because that could lead us down a whole bunch of rabbit trails really that we could. don't want to go. <laughs> <laughs> even even uh, questions with crypto. And um, give us your knowledge and um, ask us questions to research more specific mm -hmm. coins, specific projects you want us to look into and relay back to you. Um, we have fun looking at that stuff. A virus life is a wonderful life. The Jolly Roger's amazing flag. Oh, hello, folks. Come here. Come closer. Conspiracy Crypto Pirates is a new show that has really hit the interwebs, and it's going to be amazing, and I can't wait for you to join. So please like, subscribe, join all the social medias. We've got uh, x.com, we've got YouTube, uh, we've got uh, Instagram, we got it all. So like, subscribe, do all that thing. Arr! Arr! Arr!